what I'm going to be doing in this video is cleaning out the engine bay. <laughs> oh, this is going to be the longest intro ever. Cleaning out the engine bay. Down here I have a bucket of hot water, millions of different brushes. Here I have a couple of rags that she was throwing away. I'm just going to use rags and destroy. I don't have any Costco's at the moment. I'll get a cost packet of Costco microfiber. I'm just going to destroy these rags. They'll probably be enough. And I have my beloved Surfex HD. HD. Um, I've got 75, uh, 750 mil of water here. So we are going to run Surfex at around 10%. If I'm going to go and get this car done, everywhere you look, there's little problems like this. Where you have the mastic lines, you know, you've got this car, this, bon this bonnet, like most bonnets, is double skinned. It might even be treffle skinned in places. I think it's double skinned. Um, where it's slotted in, they do like a little weld line, a mastic line. That's where it's more susceptible to not being sealed properly. And then Jarrast gets in, you see? But this side is better, so the workmanship when it was made was probably better. I've noticed there's a bit of it down there as well, bubbling in that corner. So if you really love this car, and I do, what, what I would probably do is just grind that rust off there, then treat it with a rust treatment. And then, because the inside of the bonnet, there's no clear coat or anything on here, it's just the paint. I'll get some rattle paint mixed up and then, so after it, after I've rust treated it, I'll just etch primer it and then um, go back over it with some color that should match this. And doing things like that, really, it's really important to a car of this age. But it's can you be bloody bothered to do it all round? That is the difference between a good car owner and a bad one, isn't it? That they'll spend all the time doing this. Um, am I a good car owner? I'm better than average, but I'm not. I'm no saint. <laughs> some people are better than me. It's all time, isn't it? And if you end up getting rid of the car at some point, it's all this time. Anyway, this, I'm here to enjoy all this, so let's not get too confused. What do I do before I start cleaning this out, guys? Absolutely filthy, this engine bay. It really is. I don't know if you can see, you can see, but it's properly never been cleaned, really. Look at these things up here. Look, these are all gone corroded. So really, really, I'll do this at some point later on. What I want to do is probably degrease all of this first, then rust, take it off, rust treat, sand, sand some of the rust off of these and just treat it. Look, degrease all of this. And once you've treated all the rust, you could even spray and paint these. Uh, degrease it and then regrease it is what I would do. And I, these are ferrous components as well, and they are prone to rotting. So another advantage of the Surfex is it won't promote, when I'm cleaning this engine bay out, it won't promote rust. You know, so the choice of the chemicals is really, really important. Let's get stuck in, guys. I'm going to pop this down here. Ooh. Walking home late at night, maybe half past two. A little drunk, but I'm alright. Cause I've been hanging with you, and it feels like love. Tell me if I'm wrong, cause it feels like love. Yeah, it feels like love. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I want you here with me. Am I out of my mind? Or is this how it should be? You made me sing about love. So just tell me if I'm wrong. But it feels like love. Yeah, it feels like love. Yeah.
One important thing, guys, whenever you're doing work in engine bays, get yourself the proper engine bay electrical tape for wiring, for wrapping around wiring harnesses. It is not the same thing as this rubbery black electrical tape. Do not use that on the inside of the cars, it will just come off and it doesn't like being heated and cooled down. It's this specific thermal tape. This is called Certoplast, this particular one here, but it's for car engine bays. I will find as I'm cleaning this and soaking that old material, a lot of it will be disintegrated and kind of cracked. So it allows you to redress the, all the wiring har harnesses and make them look brand new. Really important bit of kit.
time. Okay guys, so I'm finished here. The results are pretty good. How clean is this engine bay on a scale of one to 10? I normally go clean enough. It really isn't actually. It's a car that's done 150,000 miles. This, really, there's so many bits where I can see where I've missed a bit and I'd need to go again and just do it more thoroughly. But it's got the engine bay. There's no point in trying to show it to you in this bad light. It's just gonna be black, isn't it? I'll overlay the shots. I've got the engine bay in a good state now. I've just done the dipstick as well. If you see the dipstick's dirty in the shots I'm showing you, it's clean now, <laughs> you dipstick. Um, Surfex HD's done all of the work at 10 to one with some old rags. That, they were clean, the missus were gonna throw them away because they were a bit worn. So I thought I'll use those. I don't have any Costco's or I need to get some disposable microfiber actually. I'll pick up a pack of Costco's. That's it. Uh, I have stuck a little bit of Car Pro Pearl on there. But, you know, people are going to say, don't dress the engine bays. The old silicon slimy dressings that don't dry, um, you know, they do attract dust. And you can have this layer of dust on top of slime. But a good engine bay dressing from a car that, you know, know what they from a detailing company that know what they're doing, that have been around for a while, shouldn't be like something that attracts dirt. It should be something that repels dirt. So Pearl, Car Pro Pearl works great in the engine bay. Um, all sorts of other things guys i've now got to go in and start diagnosing some of these problems and i'm going to shoot another video straight after this one actually um in fact i might call it a day a day for today but i've got i'm going into the boot and there's a little bit of water in this boot i'm gonna need some advice on why why that's in there why that's not running out there's obviously some drain place that's blocked or something so i've got to strip everything out and try and figure out why it's why the boot is uh, not running out of water and all the cables that you know there was a dove day player dvd player in there and i've got to figure out how to strip out the cables for that dove player properly and i'm not very good with all that sort of audio stuff i there's an iphone connection thing in there as well all sorts of funky things i've got to strip all that out anyway i'll figure that out that's it for this video guys lots more to come on the 3330 club sandwich 
uh, tons of work. <laughs> this is one little step forward getting the engine bay done. I really want to get an exterior clean done on it and get in these arches and get all this mud out from underneath. That's what's going to cause the rust and promoting the rust is that mud. So that's bugging me that it's there. So many more videos to come. Thank you very much. Please subscribe. See you later, guys. Take care. <laughs>